Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Um, recently I've been working on this landscape uh, tool called the World Forge, which is something that I'm going to release on Patreon soon. Um, and I've just implemented things like mud into it. So we've got like, this sort of like water puddle plus the landscape creating this sort of like muddy textured onto the ground which is really nice in conjunction with nanite tessellation but one thing that i wanted to also have is a water shader plane so i've actually you know worked out a, a good method of doing it and also using resources from other people that have done them in the past in previous versions of unreal engine so i've taken everything that i've learned from them and i'm going to link the source material in the description below i've taken what i've learned from there and created a really nice water sort of plane shader that i can add to my level in here to effectively create massive islands um, and, and, you know, covered by sort of like a, a big body of water. So let me show you what I've made and how I've made it. And yeah, hope uh, hope you find it useful as well. So we will start it off by making a new material. So I'm just going to go in, the, in a new folder. I'm going to go to my material and then I'm going to select material from here. And I'm going to call this M Water Shader. Then we can double click it to open it and I'm going to bring it over into my main image in here. The first thing we want to do is we want to set up the shader and what type of shader it will be. So the first thing, we're going to change the blend mode to a translucent mode. And this already gives rid of the metallic uh, specular roughness and so on, which are things that we will need. So in order for them for us to get those back and also keep our opacity, we're going to change from um, a volumetric non-directional to a surface translucency volume. And this brings back quite a few options for us. Now, we also will need the refraction because we are going to use a realistic refraction point in order for us to, um, you know, properly display that. So in order for us to enable it, we have to go all the way down here where it says refraction method and change this to an index of refraction. And now you can see that is on as well. Uh, speaking of refraction, actually, I think we're going to set, start off with the nodes for that. And one of the important nodes that we're going to use is a depth fade. And this is basically looking at objects in the world and then working out what the opacity of the effect should be uh, in conjunction or in the proximity of objects that are surrounding it. And since water is generally touching things like landscape and meshes, you do want to be able to play with that. So with the depth fade in here, we are actually going to search for a lerp. And we're going to plug this into the alpha and we are lurping between a value of 1 and a value of 1.33 which is the water index of refraction if I remember correctly. But yeah 1.33 is what I've gone for uh, in the shader. Then we're going to plug this in over in here into the fraction, refraction index. And we do want to have an ability to control the fade distance. So I am going to add a, a scale parameter. I'm going to call this refraction uh, refract. Right, there we go, depth fade. And we're going to keep this at a number of 50, let's say. I'm gonna put that into the fade distance. Opacity, we're gonna to leave to one. We don't need to control that at all, or at least not for now. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna look at the base color and metallic roughness. The metallic and roughness are quite easy because what you really wanna do is like create new parameters and just call this metallic intensity for people that don't know in order for me to get a parameter into the shader i just uh, hold s and left click and this creates a parameter and we're going to do one for roughness um, intensity as well now we're going to plug the metallic intensity to metallic and roughness into here as well which is going to allow us to control the metallic and the roughness of the water i'm going to set the metallic to zero and roughness to 0 0.1 we don't need to plug anything into the specular what we will need is to plug some stuff into the opacity and uh, base color and normal but let's do the base color for now when it comes to color for water you really want to be mixing between multiple colors so for that we are going to bring in holding by holding the free uh, number three on the keyboard left click to bring in a constant free parameter we're going to like right click it and convert it to a parameter and we could you know uh, call, you know call this color oh you know one for example and then we can duplicate this and then we can create create you know call this color o2 for example, this is a simple, very simple blend that we're going to do here. Now, the first sort of uh, color, we're going to make this into maybe like a very dark green, maybe something like that. And then the second color, we could probably just make it into a dark gray, you know, something like that. Okay, just these two colors for now. You can obviously change them to whatever you'd like 
um, going forward. Then we're going to look for the lure because we do want to effectively um, mix in between these two. Oh, sorry, not the alpha. Between the RGB of color one and color two using an alpha. And the alpha is going to be decided by a Fresnel. So we're going to plug this uh, linear interpolate into the base color. We are then going to bring in a Fresnel node in here. And we can use this to plug into the alpha. We're also going to use this to effectively tell, say where the water is showing up and where it isn't based on a depth fade node. So this is the second depth fade that we're using and we're going to plug this into the opacity. Now, when it comes to the expon exponent, uh, exponent in the base uh, reflect uh, fraction in, we do want to set up two parameters. So I'm going to S left click to add a new parameter. I'm going to call this opacity exponent. And I'm going to plug this into here and I'm going to give it a value of 0 0.8. Then I'm going to make a new scale parameter and I'm going to call this opacity Fresnel uh, fraction. Obviously, you can name these whatever you'd like, but this is what I recommend. I'm going to plug that in there. We don't need to plug anything into the normal value in here at all. We do want to, again, plug another uh, distance for, fade, for the fade distance. I'm going to duplicate this parameter here, and I am going to call this opacity depth fade, and I'm going to plug this in here. Now, a value of about 200 is generally quite okay on this. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to add a power node and connect this depth fade into the base of the power node. And we do need an um, exponent here as well, so we can actually control this. So I'm going to add a new scalar parameter. I'm going to call it distance fade power. And this we're going to plug into the exponent over here, and we're going to give it a value of 1 for now. Now, with this done, we can actually take this power and put it over into the opacity node like that. Um, obviously, the base color is already done, and you can now see the shader for what it looks like. Now, what we can do is we can go back into the world here, and we can actually bring in a plane. So I'm just going to... Uh, actually, no, let me just go to Shapes, right, Plane. I'm going to put a plane to the, into the world here. I'm going to make it quite big, because I think right now it's, you know, fairly small. So maybe a plane of, of value of 10. Uh, and I can add the water shader to it like that sorry let me just um i need to go back right okay there we go water shader i'm gonna put it in here and right now it seems that we are getting most likely we're getting an error no that's odd this should be working let me check what's going on well of course it doesn't work because i haven't applied anything that i've done to the shader so let me just press the apply button uh rookie mistake Right, okay, there we go. We now have it. And you can see that that refraction is already doing some work as we approach this over into the into the scene. But we don't actually have a normal, so that's what we need next. We're going to go back into the shader in here, and now we need to work out what to do with the normal. So for us to, in order to do this, we need to bring in a normal map. So I'm just going to add in a texture sample one, and then I'm going to make another one in here. We are going to actually I can delete this one and instead convert this to a parameter. So we're going to call this normal map and I'm going to duplicate it because we are going to mix in between the um, same parameter twice. Um, we need we do need as I said, we do need a normal map in here. So I am going to have to go and find one. I believe I had one somewhere around here. Yes, there we go. Water normal. So this normal, I'm going to put in the description below so you can just sort of like, uh, you know, download it yourselves as well. It's just a, any real, any normal would generally work. You should be fine. So I'm just going to use this for now. And we can plug this over into the, uh, into here as well. There we go. Now we have the normal in both of these slots. Um, and now we want to start uh, messing around with the UVs. So we want to be able to pan the UVs around so it gives movement, the you know the um, a sort of illusion of movement of the actual plane. So I'm going to duplicate this twice to have two panels working individually, um, and then we are going to add two append nodes. So 
this is a pen vector we can duplicate this twice so we've got two append nodes and these will both connect into speed so this is why we got a and b so we can control both the values of um of x y x and y of the two panel nodes because you know if you disconnect in here you can see speed x speed y so by appending two nodes we'll be able to control those um now we're going to we're going to consider this as being the first normal and this is the second normal so i'm going to add a, a scalar parameter and i'm going to call this um uv well actually we can call it anner speed 01 and then we can you know we can duplicate this bring it over here and we can call this panel speed 02 and then we need another one for uh well basically this is this is going to be panel speed 01 for the x channel and this is going to be the same thing for the x channel and then we need to duplicate it and this is going to be panel 01 for the y channel and now we can duplicate it as well and then this is going to be the 0 2 y channel and then we can connect this like what you're seeing here okay and as, as, as you can imagine, both of these will effectively control the speed of the water individually on the, all these axes. Uh, now we need, a, we need coordinates for both of these panels. So we're going to hold U and, and left click to get a texture coordinate in here. And we're going to add a multiply node. This is, you know, very basic stuff. Everybody sort of knows how to do this, but, you know, we'll just we'll have to do it. Otherwise, this won't work. I'm just going to connect it in there like that. Um, now we also need to be able to control the UV scale. So I'm going to add a new parameter. I'm going to say UV scale 01, which is going to control the first normal map. And then we can actually duplicate this, rename it like that. We should probably give it, you know, different numbers. So I'm going to do a number two in here and maybe a 1.3 in here. Uh, going to connect them. So this is going to allow us to control the UVs of these normal maps that we've just added. And now it's time for us to connect it further to the normal. So this is quite easy. We can bring in a blend angle corrected normals. And we are going to plug both of these normals together. We are going to add a multiply node in here. And we do want to, you know, basically uh, decide the normal intensity of both of these at the same time. So we can do this by doing an append many. And we are going to add a scalar parameter, call this normal intensity, like that. And we're going to plug this into the uh, R and G channel, uh, because that's what we're controlling right now. And then in the B channel, where we're going to always, uh, you know, think about this uh, being the, uh, you know, the normal intensity on the, on, the, on the Z axis. We don't want to mess with that at all, so we're just going to keep it at a constant of 1. And then we can control the RGB. We can put this into the multiply, and this goes into our normal like that. And already, oh, look at that. We're getting an error in here. It says that this is uh, set to color, so it should be set to normal. So that's now fixed it. Okay. Now we do have some issues where, for example, we might have issues with the speeds. So let me just first press apply, and then just have a look over here. Nothing, nothing much has really changed under the water. It's now time for us to play with a material instance. So we can actually control space, right click, create a material instance, and then we can add this to the plane. So we're going to put that in there. And now we can double click to open the material instance, which is going to allow us to control all the parameters that we have created earlier. Now, one rule of thumb for me is that whenever you have created a material instance and, you know, maybe your shader isn't working properly or you're not really seeing what's going on, is if you start playing around with these settings, you can actually, like, like for example, right now for us, the reason why this is not working is because that we have no normal intensity. But if you turn that on and turn it to, like, number one, we are now able to see our water shader in all of its glory. And you can see it's also moving in a bit of a direction there. You know, it's quite faint, but it is happening. Now... If you want this to be the new default value, you can just go back into the shader in here, look at normal intensity and make sure you set this up to a value of 1 and then press apply. And from now on, this is the default value of this shader Go, you know, for every time you sort of add it into the level. Now, what we also need to have in here is things like panel speed. So we're going to enable all of these and I'm going to put a 0, 0.0 maybe 2 or something like that. And you can now see... 
that our water is moving in various directions. Well, right now it's all going into this side, right? But basically this is a more of a tug of war, what we have in here. So the depending on how you set up your uh, panel speed, the water will sort of go either in the X or Y direction. Obviously it can go in the up or down direction because it doesn't have any up or down. Uh, we can then look at situating it within our level. So I'm going to make the plane um you know 100 times big and this is obviously quite massive but this is going to be quite useful for us to create a sort of like a lake right now with it scaled up our normals well every not our normal sorry our uv coordinates are maybe a bit too big so we're going to enable the uv scale in here and maybe push this over to like a 10 and then maybe this one to like a 5 so that is a lot better now as you can see in here and now we can have a look also how it blends with the uh, edges of the environment wherever it's colliding with the landscape. So if you look over here at the distance fade power, we can actually, if you know, if we increase this to maybe like a, like a, sorry, not increase it, but decrease it to like a zero, then you'll notice that now because we're not really adding any sort of like distance fade power into this, it's, you know, it's very sharp and hitting the environment and there's also no real um, opacity. So we may want to keep that to uh, 1 or maybe a 0 0.4. Yeah, 0 0.4 looks about right. We can have a look at uh, opacity depth fade. So let's say we make this number very, very large. You can see now that whatever is, is intersecting or, or getting close to uh, meshes or like the landscape, it's effectively fading out. Now, if we put this to 0, yet, you know, again, we're not doing any sort of opacity fade we're just simply um you know we don't have any mask going on now anymore the linear interpolate is saying that there's a zero opacity within our material so this is why it's important that you keep a value so you see 50 or 10 but you can see 50 if you want water to be like very muddy maybe barely even uh maybe barely see-through maybe you can reduce the normal intensity there to like a 0 0.1 so i think this is actually looking quite good you know if you're trying to do something it looks a bit more, you know, hyper, maybe going for like a scene where you do have a muddy ground, but you can still see the floor. Uh, we can increase this further, maybe to like a 200. So this is going to help out as well. I think the normal intensity is key here to get a realistic looking water shader. Um, obviously, if we, uh, you know, decrease the scale here of the UV scale one, we can now create sort of like small, you know, bigger kind of waves. But maybe that's moving a bit too fast, so you may want to tone it down a little bit. Um, but just remember, it is a tug of war, so you will have to play around with these settings in order to get the direction in uh, which you want it to flow properly, but also the look and feel that you'd like. And that's kind of basically it for the shader. And I'm going to just now, you know, spend a bit of time uh, just playing around with it in the environment that I've got, just to... Uh, basically see what sort of like effects we can achieve with it and so sort of like how does it how does it kind of work with the rest of the environment obviously if you were blending it with an with a landscape just make sure that you smooth out edges of the landscape whenever it's intersecting otherwise you get like these blocky looks that i have here but i hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial and i hope you learned something today please leave a like comment and subscribe if you have uh, people on Patreon get access to all my projects, so really glad to have so many people subscribed to the channel and, uh, you know, supporting me on Patreon. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for, you know, being part of this journey with me. Stay tuned for the release of the World Forge, as this is coming soon. So, yeah, I'll uh, leave you guys to it and uh, hope you create some very interesting work. Let me know and share it with me on Discord if you'd like, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.